Hello everyone, and welcome to FlowXO Academy. In this video, we will show you how to easily collect the name and email address of your customers and add them to a mailing list in MailChimp with FlowXO. We will start by showing the bot in action. As you can see, we have opted for a web bot embedded in our website. We'll show you later how you can do this. We can see that the bot starts with a welcome message offering to add us to the mailing list. It also offers a register button so we can initiate the process. If we click on register, the bot will briefly explain the process for us and request our name. Remember that all these messages can be customized in the bot's flow, as we will show you later. We are going to enter John as the name. Now the bot asks for our email address. In FlowXO, bots can validate email addresses, so we are going to enter an email address with the wrong format to test this. As you can see, the bot tells us that the email address is not valid and asks again. This time we will enter an email address in the correct format. Next, we have introduced a step where we get the customer's permission to store the data. We also give them a choice to start again. We now click on Yes, and we receive a confirmation after the bot has stored the name and email address in the mailing list. As we mentioned, all these messages are customizable, and you can also add specific actions or messages that you may need. We will now show you how this bot is configured under the hood in FlowXO. Bots in FlowXO connect to the channel where you would like to publish them, Whereas in Flows, we configure the actual conversations and actions that the bot may perform. We can have one or many flows for one specific bot. We will start by configuring the bot. In the Bots section, click on New and select any of the many channels supported by FlowXO, including Web, Telegram, Facebook Messenger, and WhatsApp. For our example, we chose a web bot, so it can be published in a website. As you can see, the welcome message from the bot is customized directly in the bot's configuration page. After this welcome message, the conversation will be managed by your flows. We start by giving a meaningful name to the bot. This will be the internal FlowXO name. We can then customize the welcome message. Scrolling down, we can select the colors, and if we click on Next, we will be given options to embed the bot in a website. The first option gives you a direct URL, where the bot can be accessed as you see here. You can also embed the bot in a website using an iframe, which could look like this in a website. Alternatively, you can also use a script. It is important to remember the name of the bot, as we can configure our flows to connect to a bot in particular. We are now going to head on to the Flows section to configure the flow that will handle the conversation with our customers. In our example, we will need only one flow, as we only want to collect the contact details and add them to a MailChimp mailing list, but you could create different flows for different conversation streams. You can also create folders to group flows and easily access them, for example if you use more than one flow for a single bot. As you can see, we created a folder to keep the flow for this example, and we already have a flow. If you click on New, you will be presented with many pre-configured flow templates. For this example, we selected the Apply or Sign Up template, and we'll make some modifications to suit our specific purpose. In the Flow Configuration page, we will start by giving it a meaningful name so we can recognize it later among other flows. As you can see, the Flow's configuration page has two parts. On the left side, we can add and customize messages and actions, whereas on the right side, we have a visual representation of the bot's messages. This will help us quickly navigate through the Flow in case we'd like to change something. 
The first action is the trigger. Here, we enter the words in the conversation that will activate this flow. For our example, we are going to replace all the words with just register and start again. We will configure the flow so it is activated only when the trigger word is sent directly to this flow. It could also be configured to trigger when it overhears the word in a conversation, although in this case a direct trigger is enough. We will also add shortcut buttons, so these options will be shown as buttons which the customers can click to interact with the bot instead of having to type them. Click on Next, and for this action we will not add any filters, as we would like it to always trigger. Now click on Save. Now click on the pencil icon next to the task's name to give it a meaningful name, and then click on Save. In the next task, we will tell the user that we are starting the process. Click on Edit to customize the message. Note that we can separate sentences in different lines. We will not need any shortcuts in this task, as we are not giving any choices to our customer. So, we will click on Next. In this case, we will use a filter so this task only runs in a specific situation. We only want this message to be shown when the user clicks on Register. The Value field retrieves the customer's response to the bot's earlier message, and the condition requires that it doesn't contain Start Again. We now have the filter configured and can click on Save to move to the next task. The next task is a step in between to check if we already have the user's name. As you can see, the question is already configured to retrieve the name as a parameter. You can select parameters by clicking on the XO button and scrolling to the parameter you require from a previous task. We also give the customer yes and no buttons to interact with the bot. Note that this answer will also be stored automatically, and we will use it later in our filters. We now click on Next to configure a filter for this task. We will use the customer's name parameter from a previous task and keep the condition that it must not be empty. This way, the task will only run if the name parameter is not empty. If we don't have a name, the flow will skip this task and continue to the next automatically. We will now click on Save and move on to the next task. In most cases, however, we will need to ask for a name, so the next task will be a question asking just that. We also have the option to perform validations on the answer, but in this case we will not configure any. So we will click on Next to configure the filter. Since this is a pre-configured template, the parameter from the previous question is already entered in the value field, and the condition is set to Yes. This way the filter will prevent the task from happening if the customer previously confirmed their name meaning either we didn't have the name or it wasn't correct. We now click on Save to move on to the next task. We will now ask for an email address. However, in this case, we will include a validation to confirm the format of the email address provided by the customer. We can also configure the number of invalid answers and also to allow unknown responses, although that will not be required in this case. We click on Next. In this case, we don't need a filter, since this task to request the email address will always run after the previous task has requested the customer's name. Click on Save to move on to the next task. The next task offers the users a choice of items to apply for. This does not apply in our case, as we are only collecting the names and email addresses so we will delete this task from the flow. To do so, click on the three dots, then click on Delete, and then on Confirm to remove it. In the next task, we will confirm to the user that we are ready to add their details to our mailing list.
we will customize the message to request their consent more explicitly. We will now offer two choices, yes and start again. Start again would trigger the flow from the beginning, as you may remember. Click on Next and then Save, since we don't need to add any filters for this task. We now have a task that will trigger the flow if the customer selected Start Again earlier. We will also configure this filter so that the task only runs if the customer clicked on Start Again. Note that this task is also configured to stop the rest of the flow. Now click on Save to move to the next task. We have now configured the task that will restart the flow if the user clicks on Start Again. The next task is to send the details to our email or help desk tool. However, we will not do this, so we click on the three dots and delete this task. Instead, we will connect to MailChimp directly. As you can see, there are many tasks that we could add. Click on More Services to access the full list of supported services and scroll down to MailChimp. You can also type in the search box to quickly filter it. We now select the Add a Subscriber action and click on Next. If we have not connected to this service earlier, it will ask us to authorize it so that FlowXO can connect to our MailChimp account. To do so, simply click on Authorize, log in to your MailChimp account in the pop-up, and click on Allow. And we can see now that FlowXO has been correctly authorized. Click on Next to continue with the configuration. Now, we click on the XO button and select from the drop-down menu the answer where the customer provided their email address. We will also select No from Double Opt-in, so that customers are directly added to the mailing list without them needing to confirm again. And we select to send them a welcome email. Lastly, we select the mailing list to which they will be added, and then click on Next. We don't need any filters for this task, so we click on Save. Finally, the last task will be to confirm that their registration has been completed and we update the name accordingly. We then click on Edit to open the task's configuration and we will customize the confirmation message. We will take the opportunity to remind them to check in their spam folder if they haven't received a welcome email in their inbox. We will also provide a shortcut so they can start the process again. This will work in combination with the task we configured earlier to restart the flow if Start Again is selected. Now click on Next and then Save, as we don't need to configure any filters in this task. We now have the full flow configured, and we are going to make sure that it is connected to our WebBot and to the Test Console as you see on the screen. Then click on Next and then on Save since we have already configured these earlier. We also must remember to turn the flow on, as otherwise it will remain inactive and not work. We are now ready to test the flow in the test console. To do so, click on the speech bubble, and if there is any previous chat, simply click on the reset button. The test console has a different welcome message from our FlowXO bot, but you can see it already offers the Register Shortcut button from the flow we configured. We will click on Register to start. The bot is already explaining the process and asking for our name as we had configured it in the flow, since it didn't find our name in the responses. We will enter John as the name, and now we are going to test the email validation. To do so, we are providing an email address in the wrong format. As you can see, the flow's validation is prompting us to enter a valid email address. This time, we will enter the address in the correct format. Now the bot is confirming with us that we will be subscribed to the mailing list. So, we click on Yes. 
As a result, the bot confirms that we have been subscribed to the mailing list. If we click on Start Again, the flow will be restarted, as we see here. Since we have it already connected to the bot, we will check it directly in the website as well. Start the subscription process by clicking on Register. We will now provide Mike as the name and the email address as well. Finally, we confirm that we would like to subscribe by clicking on Yes. The bot now confirms that the registration has been completed, so we will check in MailChimp to confirm. First, we navigate to Account, then Extras, and then API Keys. And if we scroll to the bottom, we can see that FlowXO is listed as an authorized app. This is because we added our MailChimp account to this task in our flow. So now both applications are connected and can communicate. Next, we navigate to Audience in the left menu. We see that we had no contacts before, but we have already registered some, so we will refresh the page. And now we can see Mike as a subscribed user in our MailChimp list. Finally, we will run another test. We start the flow again, and this time the name will be Peter. We also provide the email address, but this time we will click on Start Again to test those tasks of the flow. We can see that the bot starts again, but there are no new subscriptions in MailChimp since we didn't click on Yes to authorize the subscription. This time we will continue with the full process, typing Anthony as the name and entering an email address in the correct format. We click on Yes to continue with the subscription, and the bot confirms that it has been performed. If we refresh our audience page in MailChimp, this time we will indeed find a new subscription with the name Anthony that we just entered. This is how we can use and modify pre-configured flow templates in FlowXO and how we can connect our third-party services to those flows. Keep in mind, however, that the accounts you add are managed from the integrations page and not the flow where they were added. And that is all for this video. Remember, you can find detailed written instructions for this and many more features in our Help Center at support.flowxo.com. Also, be sure to subscribe to this channel for more videos on FlowXO's features, and let us know in the comments if there are any specific features that you would like us to cover in a video.